golden bachelor who found the love of his life in front of America is, well, a golden bachelor again. News broke that Gary Turner and his wife, Teresa Nist, are getting divorced after just three months of marriage. The 72-year-old man, who captured national attention as the oldest bachelor in the Bachelor franchise, told Good Morning America today, Teresa and I have had a number of heart-to-heart -heart conversations. We've kind of come to the conclusion mutually that it's probably best, or it's probably time rather, for us to dissolve our marriage. Torn between two women at the end of his season, Nist and Leslie Fema, Turner got down on one knee in the fall and proposed to Teresa. The pair got married on live television in January in a special called The Golden Wedding. Now Turner captured America's heart when he announced it's never too late to find love. The series averaged over 9 million viewers. That is, that's a lot. Now, the former couple says that deciding where to settle down contributed to their split. Now, I would think that if you really love someone, you would be happy going anywhere. I live in Iowa for half of my life. I would not be doing that if someone I love didn't live here. I have a feeling there's something more going on that led to this divorce. And this is just what they're telling the public. I'm excited to get your thoughts on this, Amber, because so many of our stories have consequences for millions of people. And this one, it's just two. So it's, a, it's kind of a fun one. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of fun to talk about something that's a little lighter, especially on a Friday. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I definitely believe that there is something else going on here as to why they decided to divorce. Um, these are the types of conversations that you should have before you get married, uh, where you want to live, whether or not you want to buy a house together, whether or not you want to combine finances. These are all of the important conversations that should take place during the courtship period. And maybe that's a, one of the problems with these reality TV love, finding love shows is that they don't give people enough time to really get to know one another. A lot of it maybe is based on that initial physical attraction and not so much on the underlying things that really make a marriage work, those values, those big life decisions that you have to make with your partner. Clearly that did not happen here, whether it's about the house or something else. Now, this particular couple, is a, is a special case maybe because they were older, they both um, had a lifetime of finances behind them and apparently the woman in this courtship, Teresa, had been quite well off and there was speculation that the reason Jerry chose her was because of her money. Well, not to worry because the pair decided to sign a prenup before they ended up having this highly publicized, televised wedding special. And Teresa, I guess, will hold on to the premarital uh, assets that she had, but she did say that she's going to give back the ring, which I think is the right thing to do, right? A, a ring is sort of, uh, comes with a contract attached to it. The idea is that if you have the ring, then you're in the engagement or in the marriage. And so if you're no longer in the marriage, I think the ring should go back to the person who uh, gave it to you for that reason. So I think she's doing the right thing, but um, everything about this, I think, is just sort of an indictment of these uh, reality shows, Jess. Yeah, it would be very weird to want to keep it after everything that's happened. I mean, maybe he got got because, you know, we were talking a little bit about the drama around this, that he told someone else she was the one. Um, maybe he didn't really love this person. Maybe it was for the money. And then as soon as the prenup thing happened, it was like, uh oh, how am I going to get out of this? There's some reporting that they filmed a family feud episode before they announced their divorce, which is going to be a hell of a watch now. And then there's <laughs> also some reporting that she never went on the honeymoon. So it may have been over before it even started. It's just crazy that this is old people's drama. Like young people haven't figured themselves out yet. That, that happens a lot. That's the basis of reality television. But old people are wiser, but they also have more baggage and apparently more money at, on the line as well. I want to see a golden Love Island. Love Island is, is my favorite. That's the one I like watching. I'm also a fan of Love is Blind now. Golden Love is Blind would be great. I think people wanted to learn, you know, from older people doing a story or, or a show about love and learn from their stories. And instead, we got the same drama as usual. Go figure. Golden Love Island I'm on board with, but only if they're not all wearing the same skimpy swimsuits because <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for that. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, the Golden Bachelor situation, um, 
you brought up, again, the money aspect of this. Apparently, ABC paid for this very swanky Italian wedding that they had. So maybe these two just really love the attention that they've been receiving from their relationship. Um, but now they realize that they actually despise each other and they can't keep going on. Um, the, the guy, Jerry, uh, was sort of cast as this guy who lost his wife um, pretty early on. I think he was 45 when he lost his first wife. Uh, she passed away, and they said that he, you know, had been basically pining for her ever since, but was finally ready to find love. And then it came out that he had had at least another three-year-long relationship and had been in, you know, several serious relationships. So the sort of fantasy love story that was sold on TV, alas, was not exactly the reality of the situation. As you said, getting older and, and making these big life decisions often comes with a lot of baggage that maybe is not present in some of these other bachelor or bachelorette programs. Um, but I, I just think, uh, you know, generally, I've always been skeptical of the idea that these things would be successful in producing happy, healthy marriages. I know there's a, obviously a few success stories, which is great. I never begrudge anybody finding love, but it seems suspect to me the idea that you can, again, find someone who really shares the right values, who is committed to marriage when you're in this pressure cooker fishbowl situation where a lot of what you're doing is really more for entertainment value than actually finding a successful partnership. Yeah, absolutely. I think about how my grandmother, she lost her husband very young. My dad was it was like a teenager. I never met the guy, my grandfather. So he passed away. She never dated again, ever. Was just like in love with this man for the rest of her life. And the only time we ever heard of there being another man in the picture is when the Pope was on the screen. This is an Italian-American Catholic woman. And she'd be like, oh, there's my boyfriend. And so we just thought grandma's boyfriend was famous. And whenever we saw the Pope, we were like, oh, grandma's boyfriend. But that's where I come from, where like marriage is about love. And like, you do have a real love of your life. But when I was in graduate school, reading a lot of the research around public policy, so many economists and behavioral scientists have observed shifts in societal trends, so national level trends on marriage, and that so often marriages happen when there's more economic incentives for them, when there's some kind of you know thing that you gain from getting married legally. Oftentimes it's economic, sometimes it's you know logistics, easier filing your taxes, you know stuff like that. Um, you know you want to have the rights to make decisions for your partner's you know medical treatment, things like this. But uh, a lot of times, you know, it is economics that's considered. Not oftentimes a prenup needs to be put in place because you think he's marrying you for money, but the kind of typical tax breaks, but they really shape how many people get marriages. You'll see major shifts when there's more incentives versus not, which makes me sad as someone who's like, you know what, marriage should be about love. I come from a traditional family like that, but Unfortunately, it's not the world we live in. Very sad. But I think, you know, people doing their own thing and putting love first, that's not dead yet. My grandmother didn't die that long ago. I still think that way. So there's still a few of us. Yeah, there's some hope remaining, but I think you're right. We have really treated marriage more as a business contract as opposed to a sacrament, something that binds you to somebody else forever, someone that, you know, really a kind of self-sacrificial love. I, I, I do fear that our society is getting away from that and doesn't really bode well for successful marriages. We've seen the divorce rate creep up every single year. I hope that there's something we can do to turn it around. The Catholic in me wants to say, Guys, get back to religious marriage, um, but I'm sure the commenters have different views. We'll let them weigh in. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. Thanks so much for watching this week. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, of course, we are available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Happy Friday, and we'll see you next week on Rising. Bye, y'all.